Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Dear authors and invited guests, welcome to the technical session 4A. Myself, Anshika Jain, and this session would be moderated by me. I, on the behalf of Global Knowledge Research Foundation and GR Scholastic LLP, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the 8th World Conference on Smart Tents in System, Security and Sustainability, World S4 2024, London, UK. The 8th edition of the conference is being organized in the hybrid mode. The physical event was organized yesterday in London, UK, and the virtual event is being held through Zoom from 25th to 26th July 2024. I hope you will enjoy the knowledgeable and interactive sessions throughout the day. In this session, we will have six presentations, and each presenter will be given 12 minutes for the presentation and three minutes for the questions and answers. On 10 minutes, I will raise a gentle reminder. There is another request to all the participants that you all stay connected through us till the closing remarks. If you have any query or any update, then you can write it to me in the chat box below. Just before we start the session, I would like to introduce you to the chair for this session. Dr. Ezekiel Ozor Okik, Senior Lecturer, University of Botswana. Sir is in currently a senior lecturer and a cluster chair of information system culture, Department of Computer Science, University of Botswana. His research interests are in software quality, models and architecture, software measurements, information systems, software engineering, machine learning, information security, cyber security, and e-systems. Welcome to the session, sir. So would you like to share a quick opening remarks with us? It's okay. Uh, you are all welcome to the conference and we hope we will have uh, a very good session together. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I would also like you like to introduce you to our next session chair, Dr. Deepak Mane, Assistant Professor Vishmar Karma, Institute of Technology, Pune, India. Sir is currently working as an associate professor, Vishwakarma Institute of Technology, Pune, India. He has 17 years of teaching experience. He has written books on machine learning, fundamental of programming languages and principles of programming languages for computer and IT students. His re main research will focus on machine learning, deep learning and supervised clustering. Welcome to the session, sir. Would you like to share a quick opening remarks with us? Thank you, ma'am, for a nice introductions and uh, yeah, eagerly uh, waiting for a nice presentation from the, all the participants. Thank you so much, yeah. sir. So we'll be beginning with the presentations. First up, we have JNU to present his paper titled Design Thinking, Game Thinking and Democracy Thinking. Are you there, sir? Hello, I am here. Yes, sir. You may please start with the presentation. Thank you. Let me let me let me share the the screen yeah you can share the screen sir can you see yeah yes sir we can see you may start thank you good morning good morning with everyone uh, i am present at the study titled design thinking game thinking and democracy thinking this study was uh, developed with my co-authors, co Hugo Arias, Patricia Costa, and Maria Elena from Un Universidad de America, Univer Universidad de las Americas, and Polytechnic Nacional. I come from Ecuador, and I am, and, and I want to present this, this uh, team. Democracy is a fundamental value for every citizen, which has to do with the human rights, societal development, peace, and security. In all countries, in Latin, in Latin uh, countries, unfortunately, in recent times, it has faced ethical challenges in various levels, from the educational environment to political actors. That's a uh, we we think about the challenge in this situation, and uh, we think that 
it is necessary early sensi sensibilization. It is imperative to inculcate these values from childhood with the aim of uh, sensitizing future generations to importance of democratic government. To introduce democratic principles, yes, in, in children. Uh, in this in this research, uh, we have we have uh, some research questions. What what did it take to make a democratic world where? What needs to be done for democratic relations to be fair and free? How can we protect the rights to children? And how can we curb the discrimination? against no traditional families composed of LGBTQ and members with diverse cultural and ethnic backgrounds. And what do open government, open source, open data mean that why are they important for democracy? This is the research questions and uh, we introduce, um, we're studying with a uh, 150 primary and secondary school teachers. In this, um, in this scenario, we use a design thinking me methodology. First, in emphasize, in this stage, um, we developed an escape rooms. It was uh, designed to, to captivate narrative exploring cyber case. In order the teachers uh, now and empathize. The second, the second step was the the fine, the finest stage in this uh, in this in this uh, uh, stage. Each team was given the task identifying uh, the problem, define the problem about the the. the the social situations. After, in the stage of IDEA, uh, IDEA 8, uh, we introduced some uh, tools that the participants develop the mechanics, dynamics, and elements of the gaming. Uh, that is the following the game thinking. After that, uh, in the prototype phase, uh, they developed with a the um, a, some creativity and 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 skills in use using tools and also artificial intelligence to put the 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 to to build an um, a prototype another scale rooms and finally in the this uh, evaluate stage, they apply thinking aloud technique with their students in order to know about the first the game and first the the acknowledgement about the e democracy. Yes, the the teachers was divided in three groups in three groups of. 50 participants. All of them uh, came from primary and secondary school teachers. They enrolled, they enrolled in a master degree program in education where the authors can uh, tutor these uh, participants. This is an example how the, the, the escape room was uh, developed. The initiative arose from the imminent threat of her destruction due to the climate change. This, this was the narrative. Uh, and they, ha they had to explore some planets uh, in the solar system to, to know. In each planet, they had a, a puzzle a challenge uh, and the information about the democracy, the values. After that, they 
experimented the, the use of the escape room, the challenge was to build their own uh, escape room about the, the problems of the social democracy. This is what uh, they are the steps from the day following to build the escapes, the final goal, transform studying topics in games, design challenge, uh, puzzles, uh, set rules, uh, create, create a reward system, uh, propose a motivational competition, and, uh, and sets levels of increasing difficulty. They also, uh, I learned to use uh, artificial intelligence, uh, but design the scabros. For example, chat GPT to, to create this storytelling, the storyboard. Uh, also, uh, also, they can create an image a fictitious image, uh, eleven labs to create avatar, the voices of the uh, of the the actors. Also, a studio a studio DID, um, in video cap cut, and um, finally they integrated the all the resources in a generally uh, platform. After a period of eight weeks dedicated to creation. Uh, educational resource for teaching uh, e-democracy using approaches as, uh, as design thinking, again thinking, the teams from each SIP presented their pedag pedagogical proposals. During this presentation, both the advantage and difficulties experiences in the design process of the educational resources were highlighted as well as the benefits on incorpor incorporating artificial intelligence. Emphasis was places to find related to appropriation and new knowledge and topics discussed. This is an uh, screenshots of some of the escape rooms developed by the participants about the stories, about the situation that the uh, children needs to solve or to know. In the in the final etapa, they test. They test the they scare rooms in some cases in computer labs, in another cases in in individual uh, laptops. And the at the end of the entire research process, the um, they into various aspects related to the implementation of ed educational technology. We saw that this was possible to merge design thinking and game thinking in the initiative in on, uh, in a innovative approach and apply them in area and particular of the teaching of concepts of keys of democracy. Also, the combination of design thinking and game thinking has uh, proved to the be effective strategy for creating immersive studies centered educational experience. Uh, the the synergy of these approaches was made uh, it possible not only average educational challenge but also encourage active participation and create problem solving. Uh, the introduction of uh, recreational elements and game mechanics through escape rooms has changed in way to teaching and creating new educational resources as well making student uh, making student change from passive observers and active participants. And finally, gamification has proven to be powerful tool to increase motivation, collaboration, and meaningful learning about the space democracy and e-democracy. Um, the introduction of recreational elements and game mechanics towards K2 uh, uh, changed the way of teaching and creating new, new educational resource. These are, are some examples that or uh, participants test your your escape rooms with um, with 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 teachers. Um, gamification is a a, a, a good uh, tool, a good way to introduce and um, uh, that the students appropriate 
some concepts about the e democracy a situation that they have to have decision in the social problems that is a or or um, and finally uh, the the application of thinking aloud methodology during the, the evaluation of exceptions prototypes provide a value window into the exper teacher experience and perceptions. The, this feedback will essential for the development of new educational resources and the continuous improvement of pedagogical proposal support by artificial intelligence. And finally, the, the knowledge evaluation questions have yielded important results by showing that the student not only internalize the topics proposed by the various uh, participants or uh, avatars team, but also experience a unique gaming experience, the double impact where educators including immersive themselves in gaming experience uh, while creating new educational resources and their students underlines the success or pe pedagogical approach in merging education, innovation, and gamification. This finds support the idea that learning can be both effective and enjoyable, creating a various cycle where educators become architects and meaningful and, la and lasting educational experts. Uh, we, with uh, the authors, can uh, recognize, uh, appreciate the cooperation of students of, of, of this uh, Maestria in Pedagogía, Mención y Docencia e Innovación Educativa UTI University for their support in the development of this work, as well as the student from the different educational institutions and the participants in the evaluation of the proposal strategies. Thank you. Uh, if you have, if you have any question, please. So do you have any questions? Yeah, it's a good a good presentation. Um, although you have used design methods that you have indicated, how about the the way you gathered your your data collection? Was it a quantitative or qualitative approach? Yes, this research was focused more more in 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 qualitative uh, uh, qualitative method the okay the in order the the information that we collected is the experience the perception about the the first the tools the escape rooms and also the perception about the 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 social problems the the values that children needs to to learn and solve any any circumstance. Yeah, I know I know it should be qualitative, but you didn't mention it because I can see you talking about focus group discussion. You said you had uh, about three groups. Yes, uh, we okay. we divided three groups in order they yeah. they uh, think about the problem, define the solution, prototype, and in evaluate. I think that yeah. the no, it, uh, we 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 know the carry out, carry about a, a focus group, but I I think now that you mentioned you mentioned I think that is it was very important to do a focus group with the three yeah. with the three groups. Yes, I think that is a, is a necessary in in the future. Thanks for the recommendation. Okay, then what how about learning analytics in uh, terms of the, the, the students that yeah yes I think that is the learning analytics could be a good um, technique to, uh, to to do and to found some some important uh, aspects for the research. Yeah, especially on the side of the learners. Okay, uh -huh. that's good. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you.
Okay, sir. Uh, actually, I have one question regarding when you are saying uh, based on the some uh, observation, design thinking and game thinking is uh, okay. One combination of we can propose one uh, teaching pedagogy. So, uh, what what is your observation? And based on that observation, you are you are saying we need to merge these two things. A uh, yes. Um... First, uh, I think that the combination of um, the game thinking, uh, be because we can, first, uh, we can do to combine the two because the, the teachers also experiment the, the creation of our uh, tools, our educational resources to to learn their students. But one possibility was the use of game thinking, but, um, but with uh, the use of design thinking, also they participate and experience. Uh, in this sense, I think that not also the students can learn and experiment about the, 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 the democracy uh, concepts, but also the teachers uh, can uh, teach and can uh, uh, think about how they learn their students. Okay, okay, sir, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your presentation. Next on, we have Umair Farooq to present his paper titled Enhancing Data Aggregation in Cluster-Based Wireless Sensor Networks with LCSS, Longest Common Subsequence Empowerment. Are you there, sir? Yes, I am here. Uh, Anjika, I am hear you. hearing you. Yeah, sir, we can hear you. You may start with your presentation, sir. Okay, can I share my presentation? Yes, sir, you can. Can you hear my presentation? Can you see my presentation? Yes, sir, we can. Okay. Uh, should I start my presentation? Yes, sir, you should. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for being here today. My name is Dr. Umar Farooq, and I am honored to present our research on enhancing data aggregation in cluster-based wireless sensor network with longest common subsequence empowerment. This is a collaborative research between the authors, that is Muhammad Jamil, Shmi Umar Farooq, Nashina Tarek, Gada al Waked, Memuna Hamayun, and Nadia Khan. In this presentation, we will explore the novel approach we have developed to improve data aggregation in cluster based wireless sensor network using the longest common subsequence technique. This is my presentation outline, which I will be followed during my presentation. The importance of wireless sensor network is increasing with every passing day due to their versatility and wide range of applications. Wireless sensor network are employed in various fields such as environmental, military, smart building, e-health, agriculture, irrigation, and traffic management. Despite their extensive utility, wireless sensor network faces several significant constraints. These include limited bandwidth, memory, computational capacity, and most critically, limited energy resources. These constraints pose challenges that need to be addressed to optimize the performance and efficiency of wireless sensor network. Now let's discuss of the, some of the key challenges faced by wireless sensor network. One major challenge is redundancy, where duplicate data can be transmitted, leading to inefficiency. Another significant issue is traffic congestion, which can occur when multiple nodes attempt to send data simultaneously, causing delays and packet loss. To address these challenges, various approaches have been adopted in wireless sensor networking. These include homogeneous networks, where all nodes have the same capabilities, and heterogeneous network with the, where nodes have different capabilities. Among these, cluster-based wireless sensor network have emerged as one of the most effective solutions. 
in cluster based network node are grouped into cluster with the designated cluster heads that manage communication within the cluster and with other clusters basically this approach help in reducing redundancy and mitigating traffic congestion making it a superior choice for efficient data aggregation our focus is on providing a comprehensive review of clustering algorithm that are designed uh, to minimize energy consumption and maximize lifetime in wireless sensor network. Key techniques including duty cycling, where nodes are active only when necessary, and data-driven method that reduce redundancy through a network processing. Dynamic programming approaches like uh, dynamic time wrapping and PCA principal component analysis enhance data correlation and network topologies. We also examine network architecture, noting their centralized system ideal for small wireless sensor networks. Uh, Centralized system basically rely on a single node to sync communication while distributing systems suitable for complex environment involved noding enhancing data within a clusters. These insights form the basis for our research on improving data aggregation in cluster-based wireless sensor networks. Here is the cluster-based wireless sensor. Our literature review identified several key challenges in wireless sensor network. Optimization involves enhancing data collection, efficiency, and reducing redundancy. Managing energy consumption is critical for prolonged network operation, requiring strategies to minimize power usage in sensing, processing, and data transmission. Extending network lifespan demand efficient protocols and techniques to sustain long-term operation despite limited energy resources. Here is the proposed mechanism. Our proposed architecture improves data aggregation in wireless sensor network by employing a structured approach. Conventional node collect and transmit data to a cluster head. The cluster head utilizing our proposed algorithm processes and eliminate redundant data before sending the refined information to the base station. The data transmission flow in one conventional node sending their collected data to a cluster head. The cluster head then processes this data to remove redundancy and transmit the clean data to the base station for final decision making. This architecture enhances efficiency by optimizing data processing and reducing unnecessary data traffic. Basically, the cluster head play a crucial role in our architecture. It stores data from node within the same cluster in separate table and compare these data sets to identify redundancies. Using the longest common subsequence algorithm, the cluster head employs sliding window parameters to avoid unnecessary comparisons. The data comparison processes involve comparing initial value from one table to values in another until a match is found. This, the sliding window parameter and all the data set expires. This method ensures the efficient identification and removal of redundant data. This flowchart represents the longest common subsequence algorithm, which is used to identify common patterns in two time series, that is T and S. The process starts by initializing the comparison between these two sequences. From each time series, the current element T, I, and S, J are extracted, following, followed by their subsequent element that is T, I plus one and S, I plus one, that is the next values in this time series. The algorithm check F matches S, I, and F, T, I plus one matches S, I, uh, J plus one, ensuring these matches fall within a predefined threshold. If a match is found, the location of T, I, and S, I are stored. F not SJ and SJ plus one are updated and the matching condition is re-evaluated. This process continue until elements of the time series are checked ultimately providing the location of the common subsequence.
Evaluation of the proposed technique focuses on several, several key matrices. Congestion control, which assesses how well method manage network congestion. Effic energy efficiency, which measures how effectively it conserves energy. End-to-end -end delay, evaluating the time required for data to travel from source to destination. And lastly, packet reduction, which quantified the decrease in the number of transmitted data packets. These matrices collectively help us to compute the performance improvement and benefit of our proposed approach. In evaluating congestion control, our approach was compared against traditional energy efficient and congestion control method. The result shows that our technique significantly reduced network congestion by decreasing the number of packets transmitted. This reduction in packet traffic lead to enhanced overall network performance, demonstrating the effectiveness of our approach in managing network congestion. Our proposed algorithm demonstrates better performance in energy efficiency compared to both traffic-based and resource-based protocol. It significantly reduced both energy consumption and data size. Specifically, when comparing data sizes, resource-based protocol result and data size that are 14% larger than the, those proposed by our algorithm. By achieving an optimal data size, our approach enhances energy efficiency and overall network performance. With longest common subsequence enabled data aggregation, our approach effectively minimizes end-to-end delay by reducing traffic flow and data set size. By streamlining the data processing through the LCSS algorithm, we achieve a more efficient network with reduced congestion. This result in faster data arrival time, showcasing how our method enhances overall performance by optimizing data handling and reducing delays in wireless sensor networks. Our result demonstrates the effectiveness of our algorithm in reducing network congestion and improving efficiency. By increasing time interval, we observe a substantial decrease in the number of packets transmitted. This reduction in packet traffic highlights the algorithm's success in optimizing data transmission and enhancing overall network performance. Here is the conclusion of our presentation. Effective data processing techniques are vital for enhancing the performance and extending the lifespan of wireless sensor networks. Our study demonstrated that implementing optimal data aggregation methods such as LCSS enabled sliding window control based aggregation significantly reduces resource usage and improve efficiency. To further advance wireless sensor network capabilities, additional research is recommended into other aspect of data processing mechanism, which include, include data capture and in-node processing. Such investigation will contribute to even greater performance and effectiveness of WSN. Uh, the, here is the list of present, few present, uh, references, which we use in our research and presentation as well. That's all my presentation. If you have any question, please. Thank you so much, sir. So do you have any questions? Yeah, you said uh, you did a comprehensive review, but you just have uh, about 10 uh, literature sources. Actually, sir, I show a uh, limited number of uh, literature review as I am used, uh, I, as we have studied more than 25 to 30 literature review papers in our uh, related work. This only I am is showing here uh, due to limited time. I am showing here only 10 references. So if you did a comprehensive literature review, was it yeah. a systematic study? Uh, yeah, exactly. Actually, sir, uh, for this purpose, we have studied a lot of paper. Uh, as I uh, mentioned that only few, I, I mentioned here only few, not at all. Yeah, what I'm where I'm going is that if 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 you also employed a systematic literature survey, the the way you do systematic literature review is different, quite different from other. Uh, yeah, exactly. Kind of... Exactly, sir. Systematic literature review required more than hundred and two hundred papers to study and make a proper comparison list of that. For this research, we can do systematic literature review. We only did. Yeah, that's research. what I want to hear. That is not okay. a systematic okay. literature yeah, yeah, review. Yeah, okay. yeah, because you say you did comprehensive review and so on and so forth. Okay. Um. 
And then I just observed that you were you were presenting without us seeing you, you know, uh, you uh, sorry, presentations uh, 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 at uh, international uh, conferences. You need to to be seeing you. We need to see how you are <laughs> you are doing it so that it doesn't yes, sir, appear uh, as if uh, uh, just uh, reading. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Due to uh, it's okay. Mm. <laughs> Uh, I have camera, okay, any other question? Any other question, sir? Okay, uh, so you mentioned the, some challenges of WSN, right? Like as a, a redundancy in concurrency control, uh, conjunction control, right? So yeah. uh, based on your uh, survey uh, study, uh, can you tell us how, how, how it is handled and what is the new thing in that? How did that okay. is overcome? Okay, okay, sir. Sir, uh, and basically in literature review, um, uh, existing techniques working uh, to collect data from sensor, uh, basically cluster head collecting data from sensor, and it is forwarded to the uh, base station. Some techniques only collect uh, cluster head collect data and forward it to a base station, and some techniques using different methodologies like. PCA principal component analysis is a technique which selected randomly some of the nodes data and uh, compare it and uh, select the specific one and reduce uh, uh, eliminate the reduced, uh, redundant data and forward it to a base station. But in our technique, we compare each and every node data, remove redundant uh, values and then forward it to the base station. For this purpose, we are using LCSS enable algorithm at the cluster head. That is the main difference between the existing literature and our work. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. That's all for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, all. Now we would move on to the next presentation. With author titled Hirek Jyoti, with paper titled Enhanced Library Service with AI Solutions, Empowering Librarians Through Cutting Edge Tools, a study. Are you there, sir? Yes, I am here. Okay. You may start with your presentation, sir. Yes, sure. First, let me share my screen. Yes, sir. Is it visible to everyone? Yes, sir. Your screen is visible. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. You may start. Yeah. Uh, good morning and good afternoon and good evening to everyone. Uh, as we don't know where we are joining, uh, myself, Dr. Hirab Jyoti Hazarika, uh, presently working as an assistant professor in the Assam Royal Club in University, India. Uh, I am delighted to present on the topic enhancing library service with AI solution and powering librarians through cutting edge tool A study. Uh, this presentation is uh, based on a draft research paper authored by Prasanna Kumar, who's Dr. Yogziti Hazurika, Dr. Pranjal Hazurika, Dr. Ozit Kumar, Dr. Digantu Kumar Nath. Uh, in this presentation, we are basically discussing how AI is going to help library profession or allies profession, we can say. Uh, how we are going to develop our service, how we can increase or how can we can decrease our workload with the AI techniques. As we know, in a digital age, libraries face growing silence in managing past collections to meet the needs of patrons. To address these change challenges, this study explore how to integrate AI solution into library management system with the aim of empowering librarians with the advanced tool to improve and efficient and mind effectively. The machine language processing the method, explore the potential benefit of AI technology, include data analysis, the use of AI enable librarians to streamline routine tax improve discovery, personalized service and gain valuable insight from the data analysis to understand user of the practice and preferences better understand. And this study examined the impact of opportunity of adoption of AI in library service. So here is the introduction of my presentation. I have categorized into four categories. One is rule of library. 
and second is the challenges faced by the libraries expand the next exponential information growth uh, foot and last is AI as a solution. In the rules of libraries, it is talking about libraries as you know, libraries play a crucial role in facilitating information, access, supporting education, and promoting lifelong learning. And they, uh, they are central to the intellectual, cultural development, and individual and community. And third is challenge faced by the library present days. And modern library face significant challenges, like including managing past and continuous growing culling so and meeting the diverse and involving needs of their patrons. As you know, the father of library information says that library is a growing organization. So every day the collection is increasing, not decreasing in the library. So it is difficult to manage. So how we are going to include AI for the managing those collections in the library. And how the expansional information go, the expansional information, uh, expansional growth of information at complicity to the task of organizing, retrieving, and delivering relevant resources. This increasing volume of information make difficult or traditional method to keep peace. As you know, in a traditional method in the library, it is difficult to find it books. As you know, we have to visit the library and we have to say every shelving to such a single book. So it is difficult for human to search one last book in the library. So how are you going to help for this to searching a the uh, charging a textbook or something any kinds of research related some journals some thesis or some dissertation so we are going to discuss and those things also AI as a solution so as you know AI is rapidly going to emerge as a powerful solution to this challenge by enhancing efficiency providing personalized user experience and offering data driven insight AI can transform library cycles rapidly Next, what is AI? AI present this, everyone knows about AI. Because AI basically is a refer to the solution or assignment of uh, simulation of human intelligence process by machine and particularly computer systems. This process included learning, reasoning, and self-correction. As also know that AI encompasses various subfields including machine learning, national languages process, and computer vision, robotic expert system, and many more. In the diagram, you can see uh, the, how AI is processing in the library service. The, for this study, we have selected three objectives. The one is uh, investigated AI intake on library service, focusing on empowering librarians for personal assistance. Our second, to explore the specific AI tools and technologies available for libraries. And third and last, to evaluate the effectiveness and impact of AI-powered library service on user certification, efficiency, and overall library performance. So after reviewing different types of literature, we have found three outlines from the literature. The first outline is AI and internet of things, which is called IoT, are revolutionizing libraries by enhancing service quality and sustainability and security. And secondly, the AI application in library include chatbots for user assistance, recommendation system for personalized resource suggestion, and automated catalog and classification development. And number three, the integration of this AI tool significantly enhance the user engagement satisfaction by providing tailored service that meet individual needs. AI in libraries, the artificial intelligence in library increasingly finding the application in library transforming the way information is organized, accessed, and utilized. Here is the several AI being utilized in library. One is subject indexing. Subject indexing is basically dealing with the uh, data of whatever data is available inside the library, how we are designing to search those information for the patron. Here, patron is talking about the user because in the library, we have many kinds of user like in academic efficiency, this faculty members, student, in the student also, there are different categories available. 
and like a research scholar and like uses a student or like PhD student, how they need information and how going to search those information, how we can develop those information to easy to access those information to the user, the subject information, it will help to just retrieve information from the library. So that's AI enabled libraries, it will help and to find any data within a start board. So, so subject indexing is a very important part in the AI in the libraries. Then now second is cataloging. One is the important area where allies people is doing. Allies is talking about library information science professional is dealing with. In AI algorithm can automate the process of cataloging and managing metadata for library resources. And like natural languages processing techniques can analyze and extract relevant information from text, making easier to classify and organize resources. In a traditional library method, as you know, in the, in the book, we have uh, in the cataloging process, we need to add some information like title, author details, publisher details, and uh, other information like the ISBN, ISSN, and or uh, editor details. And if it is available online, online details also we are required to involve. In manual method, we need to add those information in the software in like, which is widely famous like Kuha or Sol globally. But those are manual process. In a, if we AI enable process, we can single just searching the title with directly intent, we can input those information for another sources or another databases. Next is recommendation system. Recommendation system, AI power recommendation system can help patron discover relevant books, article and other materials based on their interest, going history and reading habits. This system analyzes user data performance to provide personal recommendation, enhancing the overall user experience. Next is uh, partial assistant and chatbot. The virtual assistant and support uh, that the libraries are increasing implementing this virtual assistant and support to provide instant assistance to patron. Suppose if any kinds of information is required, that's uh, directly user or patron can put their question in a chatbot. It will reflect their answer as per the whatever information they have or allies professional or library is to put it in the library. It will reflect in the chatbot. So this AI powered Chatbot system can common queries and provide guidance on a library service and help user navigate the resource more efficiently. And another option, AI tools, data analysis in inside. AI techniques such as the machine learning enable libraries to analyze users, pattern, trend, and user behavior. This data can be leveraged to optimize library service, collection development, and resource allocation based on the needs of the performance of patrons. Next, text and data mining. Text and data mining AI algorithm can analyze large volumes of text, data to exact valuable insight and knowledge. Library can use text mining techniques to uncover hidden pattern relation and trend within the collection, enabling researchers to explore and discover information more efficiently. Next is preservation and conservation. Uh, preservation and conversion AI technologies like computer vision can assist in the preservation and comparison of rare and fragile materials. That automated system can digitize and analyze manuscript, maps, and other archival materials, helping to protect and make them accessible wide audience. That content curation and creation. Content, uh, it is talking about how AI power content uh, help to create a content for the library. It also help to gather, organize and present relevant information from driver source. And AI can add to content creation by generating summarized abstract and metadata for library services. Here is AI tools for libraries. This is the tools which is available worldwide. The first is the Research Rabbit. Research Rabbit is accessed and discovered for innovative concepts in various fields. Next is the Open Read AI. It's a text analysis for gaining insight about the library collection. Now, next AI tools is Consciousness. 
It is a AI-based search engine for extensing and synthesizing academic research information. And fourth is talking about size space. It is simplified by understanding the academic research paper. But you have two minutes yes. to conclude your presentation. Okay, thank you. So here, ad goes for library user experience. One is the uh, Bootsonic. Bootsonic Sadboot is providing 20.7 assistant to patron. And second, uh, Quicksart. Quicksart is the AI enhanced self service by answering basic question. And third is Copyscape. Uh, Copyscape to answering the originality of library resources. Here's the AI tools for librarians efficiency. It is basically used by librarians. This is SAD PDF. SAD PDF is uh, summarized length and resource paper. And perplexity uh, perfl to an analyze resource trend for keeping librarians update. Next is SAD GPT, which is worldwide famous SAD board. Uh, SAD GPT is generated various sexual content and assist in a library related work. Now, another is Quillboard. Quillboard is uh, used basically using for grammar checking and uh, paraphrasing and summarizing of information. And Grammarly, which is also widely famous, Grammarly is improved writing skill by providing grammars and suggestions. So here is the example of uh, how manual process is doing inside the library. Before we need to see the due decimal classification, which is coming with four volume, Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3, and Volume 4. First, if we are looking for some title to classify like autism, here we need to go for 600. See, under 600, you'll find technology. Under 610, it's medicine and health. Under 610, you'll find they have to find disease, 616. Like that, synchronous, different types of code will be available. We need to say one by one where we need to for one book, when we are going to classify, it will take minimum 30 to 45 minutes. So after AI enabling, just need to type find a suitable, in the SAT board, the find suitable DDC number for this last tab, uh, title of the book, like object-oriented programming with C++. Just need to title, uh, incorporate this title in the SAT board. Directly, it will give a perfect due decimal classification number within just a one minute, about one second. So like that, we can reduce our workload and within a uh, uh, AI technique incorporation in library service, it will uh, help to decrease our workload and increase our work performance. So finding from this presentation, virtual assistant and chatbot are being deployed to offer assistant and uh, instant assistant, while machine learning uh, algorithm analyze user behavior to optimize service. Number two, AI facility tracks and data mining for deeper insight into the collection. IoT contribute to the development of smart library, improve service sustainability and security. Number three, AI tools are being utilized in previous library function, including collection, management, circulation, and security, which improve user experience and preps the AWA future in innovation. Number four, AI solutions are automating routine acts such as cataloging, indexing, such as reduce manual level, improve metadata, accuracy, streamline, collection, the development. Here is the suggestion from the study. The adaptation of AI can be lead to the development of some the smart library with improved resource management and security. Librarians and policymakers are encouraged to consider this technology for staff development and to meet involving user expectation and libraries can enhance service by integrating AI to automated cataloging, personalized user experience with recommendation uh, system and employees are good for efficient and patron assistance. Uh, here is the conclusion from this study. This study concludes that uh, AI integration in the library service significantly enhance efficiency, personalization and user satisfaction. AI different tools like chatbot and recommendation system improve user engagement and streamline librarian workflow by automating routine tax such as cataloging inquiry response. And the study also highlighted the transformative potential of AI in optimizing collection development and providing insight to the data analysis. Furthermore, we can say that the adaptation of AI, AI and IoT technology is Pivotal of uh, for the evolution of libraries into a smart library offering advanced service that align with the digital age and demand. However, it is noted that integration of AI in libraries still in the 
nascent stage indicating room for growth and further innovation. Thank you so much for your attention. If you have any question, please. Thank you so much, sir, for your time and presentation. Sir, do you have any questions? Yeah, it's a good presentation, uh, only that the AI application in, in library did not distinguish between uh, user services and uh, services provided for management purposes. For instance, you mentioned data analysis and insight. You also mentioned text and data mining. I'm wondering how uh, a user, a library user, can come to the library and immediately you make use of uh, um, the, what, the, whatever resources you have in the library using your tools to, 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 to generate data and to analyze the data or to get data and mine the data with appropriate reports, results. So yes, sir, yes, I, in sir, that I case, I think, I think there is need to distinguish between the what the AI will be doing for the library user and what it will be doing for those services uh, for the for management purposes for those who work there and how they can use it to be able to obtain certain reports that is useful for them. Yeah, exactly, sir. Exactly. We are also discussing with many vendors from USA and Australia to this uh, integrate with uh, one software which is called Folio. It will very soon. It will launch very soon in the. South uh, Asian and European country. Hope so many library are going to adopt those uh, software to integrate AI tools with the library system. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, do you have any questions? Okay, uh, sir, uh, can you tell me, okay, you applied the AI technique. So can you give the more focus on what is your contribution? New thing which you get, uh, get when, we, uh, when you applied AI techniques in library process? Uh, basically, what's our, uh, if you see in the traditional method, so a traditional method, I'm basically focusing on cataloging, but which is more time consuming and uh, technical, but um, time consuming in the life, allies professional. So before what we need to do, we need to do cat cataloging versus in a card, we in the, in give information about the metadata, like uh, the metadata is talking about title of the book, author of the book or editor of the book, publisher of the book, or uh, in basic information content of the book, the where we need to write every information in the card. So after that, it is uh, after 2010, uh, 2000, it's for come under mark, mark, which is called machine access readable catalog, where you'll get a one for which is designed by Library of Congress. And we need to add all information uh, via typing mode to all the information to the mark format. After that, we need to save it and it will reflect in the search box. But now, in a, if we are going to enable AI with this uh, cataloging system, just via just typing ISB number or uh, ISSM number, directly all information will get uh, whatever going to ask by the, the allies or profession, or it may be asked by the patron or user of the library. Mm -hmm. So AI, for, from this, uh, this one, enabling this AI techniques, it will very much helpful for allies profession to discuss the workload. Even it will help the user also the searching the document. If you have in a library with a more than 10 lakh document or 20 lakh document, it is very difficult to search the document in a uh, inside the library to with the find out the books, textbook. I'm talking about printed, not I'm not talking about e-print. So if you're going to see the printed book, it is very difficult. So, so if AI it will, if is uh, it is enabled with AI system, then it will directly identify and it will give a direction to the uh, selling where it is located. So, like that, we can help to the library service or like we can help to the patrons. Okay, okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Sir. So much, sir. So we'll be moving on to the next presentation. Next up, we have Jelicity to present her paper title Financial and Facial Optimization through the Implementation of Electronic Invoicing in the Construction Materials Distribution Sector. Sector, Are you there, ma'am? Are you there, ma'am? So we'll be moving on to the next presentation. Next, we have Isra to present her paper titled 
MRI based brain tumor classification utilizing optimized discrete wavelet transform and principal component analysis techniques are you there ma'am uh, yes i am here so you may start with your presentation now ma'am we can see your screen and the presentation you may start it's okay yeah okay Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Fra, uh, Fletcher from University of Technology, Baghdad, Iraq. Uh, my researcher uh, start uh, about the introduction and the uh, goals of uh, the research. And uh, then we talk about uh, MRI image classification using uh, discrete wavelet transform and uh, principal component analysis techniques. And then uh, we talk about the uh, evaluation and comparison uh, in this uh, research and optimization techniques, the finally result and conclusion. About the, uh, our uh, objective uh, is to categorize the uh, MRI image uh, data sets uh, to, uh, in two, two sets. Uh, benign and uh, and uh, malignant uh, malignant categories to improve tumor segmentation and detection uh, in uh, in very accurate. Here we use uh, the uh, discrete uh, wavelet transform techniques uh, to discover uh, key features of uh, image. Then we use the PCA techniques to reduce the features space while re retaining the most significant uh, coefficient uh, data set. <clears throat> Here the uh, DWT uh, is used to deconstruct the segmented image. After segmentation uh, stage, we uh, need to deconstruct uh, the uh, image uh, and uh, then they enter to the uh, second stage uh, as in figure one. This is the proposed the, the block diagram of our methodology. Uh, as you see, we use here the iteration uh, number of iteration is 100. We use 100 iteration. Uh, this iteration uh, is very uh, important uh, to improve the accuracy and reduce the losses of uh, accurate of image. This is the block diagram of PCA. Uh, the result. We improve the accuracy achieved by our methodology uh, between uh, DWT and PCA, enable the extraction of robust features that capture the key characteristic of brain tumors. Uh, <clears throat> also, the extended range of iteration uh, made the virgin performance and the accuracy of the tumor category sooner or later more desired. Sorry. Okay, this is the uh, result. Uh, uh, figure three, uh, it's the set of uh, MRI image for uh, B9, and this is for uh, malignant uh, image. And uh, this is the result between um, this uh, comparison between training and uh, uh, test set. Uh, and uh, we uh, we comparing about the accuracy and uh, losses. Uh, finally, uh, we uh, our findings show the recommended techniques that hopefully uh, we uh, by classifying the MRI image uh, in uh, more accurate uh, and uh, more performance. Okay, thank you.
for your singing. Thank you so much for your presentation, ma'am. Sir, do you have any questions? So your mic is mute. I wanted to see more of the future extraction techniques that you use to extract those things and how the images were analyzed. Yeah, but you were very fast. Uh, so, sorry, can you repeat that? I wanted to see more of the future extraction techniques employed and how the images were analyzed and cla classified and an analyzed and classified. But uh, yeah. you were very fast with that. Uh, yeah, uh, we uh, we use the uh, SVM uh, classifier uh, and uh, machine. SVM learning. meaning? Yeah, SVM. Meaning? SVM means what? Can you hear me? Hello? I think she's off. Oh, uh, yeah. Can you hear us? Maybe it's network. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's okay. No, you can go to the next one. Or if any other. I think she's. The network is not okay with her. Yes. So we'll be moving on to the next presentation. We have Mohammed yeah. Bambang to present his paper titled Online Assessment Security Through Computer Lockdown and Human Protector Methods. Are you there, sir? Yes, I am. Okay, you may start with your presentation, sir. Okay, hold on. Can you see my screen? Yes, so we can see your screen. You may start your presentation. Okay. Hey everyone, my name is Muhammad Bambang Hidayanto, and I'd like to present you our research about online assessment security through computer lockdown and human proctor methods. This is a combined approach in securing online assessment through the use of the available technologies and the capability of the human resource of the organization. This research was initially started in 2020 in overcoming the problem that we already know about the COVID-19 and the impact that led to the restriction on social activities. Moving on to the research background, uh, it is about the impact of the COVID in uh, education. The pandemic itself has led to the landscape change, highlighting higher education, which was the place where the research was conducted. At the moment, many will suggest uh, to adopt learning management system uh, to enable the online delivery, since it also offers a lot of benefit, such as flexibility and also accessibility, and can be considered as the catalyst for the organization to expand their business. And also, uh, at this point, the two backgrounds are pointing us to the needs for the higher education to transform their operation into online environment which will lead to the third point of this research. That is how the organization can do it with the mindset that there will be many challenges in conducting online learning. And this research uh, was taking the subset of the online learning, that is the online assessment or the process of the evaluation. So uh, we talk about the assessment process and how the new method can have the same outcome with the traditional one, within the perspective of ensuring academic integrity. Moving on to the next slide, the terms of security measures in online assessment itself was pro, because it is mandatory for the organization, especially in higher education, to maintain their credibility. It is why they need to maintain the credibility because uh, it is about the qualification for the organization to deliver their specialization, which led to the customer trust. The security factor will be crucial in overcoming and preventing fraudulent behavior in online assessment. 
with this mindset, there are at least two techniques that can be used in the organization. One is factoring, and the second would be computer lockdown. The pictures on the right uh, is telling about the four methods of proctoring according to Holden in 2021. There are four methods. Uh, the, pic the picture A would be the excavation, B is recorded exam, C is web recording, and D, live online proctoring. Since we are talking about online, the last method is seen as the most appropriate method that can be used by the organization. And the second technique is securing online assessment would be using computer lockdown. It is uh, it's info, it involves the integration of third party tools that will restrict a certain activities from the keyboard shortcuts, such as copy, paste, print, and uh, screenshot, and restrict the access to other application. So we begin the research with studying XYZ University, XYZ University, sorry. And focus, focusing in the TOEFL administration that is uh, served by the by the unit in the in the university. So the pictures on the left uh, was when we are trying to have the simulation that is connected in the XYZ university, where all the where all the technology of proctoring and computer lockdown methods are combined. That way we can assess what problems can happen. And, and how can we resolve it within the perspective it is conducted uh, following line. And what we gain from the simulation process that there will be five uh, subset of the process that need to be served by the unit. First is preparation, and then certification, supervision, authorization, and, and support. Moving on to the second platform. Model is utilized as the assessment platform, incorporating monitoring and access control mission through the implementation of the safe exam browser. The, the monitoring process commences by verifying the participants, identify using the Zoom application, where participants are required to join, display their uh, ID card, and receive access code to enter the or to take the assessment. This scenario is conducted in two phases. First is simulation phase. To ensure uh, the the participant has uh, has been ready, increase the awareness of the process flow, and the second would be the the examination uh, phase. Here are the assessment infrastructure, support the technical requirements of the model as the, as the assessment platform. This include the task such as managing model. Uh, how the program owner as the as the main actor of the or the is it, the head of the unit to define the entire process of the assessment and then there are three mission consists of teacher lm and lecturer to provide the question bank for the assessment administration staff to provide administrative support proctor and technical staff so, uh, here here is the the proposed flow of process of the structured assessment. First, the student will would be would need to be to join the meeting through Zoom, and then uh, doctor will record the meeting, and then doctor will explain the procedure, and all the participants will need to activate the web camera and show their ID card. So after the process of the verification is complete, the doctor would send the access key, so the student can access the assessment course through the use of the fact exam browser. And after that, uh, the proctor will, will start to supervising, monitoring the process with the with the two uh, point of view. First is from the webcam, and the second from the camera of the participants mobile phone. And if there is something that is suspicious, the proctor can, can suspend the student and and then the student will be moving to the breakout room to be identified what is the things that we need. Here is the results and funding according to the simulation phase. As you can see, there are actually two, two, two main problems, two main issues that need, that need to be uh, resolved. One is the times taken to, to prepare everything. Like uh, 
taking the screenshot of the in the verification phase and also positioning the mobile phone camera, installing SCB, and handling the compatibility and bug issues. And the last would be how the doctor can uh, identify which activity is uh, categorizing as a cheating activities and how the stopping mechanism can work while uh, the assessment is uh, running. So uh, the workaround that, that we have uh, been been uh, doing is to provide the simple to provide the documentation about the requirement standard and also the, to provide the preparation time for the participant so they, they don't have to uh, resolve the problem when the examination uh, is about to begin. Here is the continued result and finding. According to the data from 2022, 2020, and 2023, there are increase of 37% from the participants. This approach not only served as effective measures to address the challenge faced by the full test service at XYZ University during pandemic, but also uh, at, the, at the recent times. Next is, it is about the suspected cheating incident that is collected from the 2022 and 2023. And uh, the finding from the implementation of online assessment with security approach is how you need to have suspected the cheating incidents. And the most prominent incidents would be the remote access and the drastic change in the test course, which led to the possibility of jockey activity. According to the investigation process, one of the applications used for Jockey was portable data fever. This led to the decision of unit to strengthen the computer lockdown techniques. And fortunately, the technology that has been adopted is uh, have the ability to support this uh, this feature. So this would be the conclusion. The approach that we have been uh, proposed is can be categorized as successful with the increased number of the participants. And uh, we can say that it's from the pandemic times until, uh, until now. But then yeah, the approach itself is still vulnerable with the cheating activities. That is why uh, practice improvement is needed to prevent the to prevent and also to enhance the security for the online assessment in the future, either in the proctoring methods or the, or the computer lockdown in preventing remote stop possibility. That is all from me. Uh, thank you for your attention. I would like to return to the session to the moment, please. Thank you so much for Thank your presentation. You. So, do you have any questions? Yeah. Um. Dambang is that the name or he the? Uh, copy man. Okay. Do you have experience with Respondus lockdown browser? With what? Response. Respondus lockdown browser. Respondus lockdown browser. No. No, I think I'm new. Then which 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 lockdown uh, did you use to make this assessment? Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you clearly before. So the the application that we are using is uh, the same exam browser, SCB. It is actually a local one in our country and is used by either the government, the the education itself, to prevent the the user to have another opportunity to access other resources. Yeah, I know. I know what you are saying. The uh, the the, lo the 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 lockdown yeah. and the human proctoring, uh, they they are available tools, and one specific general one is called Respondus Lockdown Browser, and all the settings are there. If you are doing online assessment or online exams. You 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 and uh, you want to you want the students to you can you can you can Google it Respondus Lockdown Browser. The okay. people can you may not do that now. Uh, people can they can install it on their laptops. It, it's a freely available software, and all it does is that while you are doing this online assessment, it will not allow you access oh, okay. to anything that will create cheating. So it will stop you from 
uh, it will stop the, the 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 student from making use of any internet sources from anywhere. Yeah. Then the the proctoring, the proctoring, it's because the cameras are there. The person knows that you are watching through the camera, or the the system is taking photographs of all the people doing the exams. So I, I'm just narrating this because you can you can actually completely eliminate cheating because if you do the settings properly, if you do the settings properly, especially with Respondos Lockdown Browser, and you set properly, there's no way a person within the limited time can will be able to access other resources on the internet. And then if it is textbooks, the cameras are there to, to take his photograph, the moment is trying to leave or do anything because the camera is completely covering the entire environment. So um, the study is okay, but uh, the tools, if you use them properly, you can avoid the level of cheating and so on and so forth. Yeah. May I respond to uh, your okay. statement before? Yeah. Why we use, not why we use, uh, why we start developing our, our uh, approach or design because uh, at, the, at, the slide, at the beginning of the slide uh, I told you about the capability of the resources that the organization uh, have. In this case uh, it's about the ex budget university and it is about a unit, not the university the unit. There is only have uh, what is it maybe 10, 10 people running the services and they need to uh, what is it? To eliminate the cost, reduce the cost of the assessment. That's why they are trying to uh, find the solution from the open source application. That's why the ECB is still used. I know the the there are a lot of products that can have the same feature and also the what is it? What is it? Uh, the new technology, but then it costs uh, a lot. I think. Uh, that's my answer for the response of that. Is it right? Thank you so much. So I sincerely thank our authors for their excellent presentations and contribution in this session and all our participants for being a part of this international conference. I hope the session was informative enough. We, on the behalf of the whole team, Thank you for the support during this eighth version and all the previous seven versions of the conference. We will be happy to have you in the ninth version in 2025 as well. All the presenters would be getting their digital certificates through email within two working days. Further, all the papers have already been forwarded to the sponsor. The publication will be live within six months. Kindly cooperate with the team of World S4 2024. I would also like to take a moment to thank our session chairs for chairing this session, Professor Ezekiel Azor Okik. Thank you, sir, for chairing this session. This is a token of appreciation on the behalf of the whole team of World S4 2024 and Global Knowledge Research Foundations and Partners. Would you like to share a closing remark, sir? I just want to thank all the presenters. Uh, you have done a good job and uh, we have made some useful comments, some of which you can actually uh, incorporate into your final, the final versions of your papers. Um, in particular, they, there was a paper in the other session that I entered, uh, if you remember, yes. that uh, I, I would like the author to incorporate what is called um, use case descriptions, because it will, it will show in the paper, the use case descriptions will help students understand the, the design properly. It was a good presentation. So, but with the use case descriptions, and since it is uh, uh, um, object-oriented analysis and design of that software, if you can go through all those things, and since it's going to be published in um, uh, in, in, in in computer science text by Springer, and students who read it will be able to appreciate the the presentation the way it is, or researchers who read it. 
So thank you for the presentations. Uh, you have done a good job. Thank you so much, sir. I would all like, also you. like to take a moment to thank our next session chair, Professor Deepak Mane, for chairing this session. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable contribution. Would you like to share some quick closing remarks with us? Okay, all, all presentation was good. And uh, yeah, some of uh, researcher has given very good presentation. They have did a, a good implementation. They are trying to find uh, some novelty. Yeah, overall, overall is a good presentation. So on. thank you. Now I would request everyone to please switch on their cameras for a quick snapshot. Everyone kindly switch on your cameras for a quick snapshot. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for your valuable presence. Thank you so much.